Welcome to part 55 of the Vicky Series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be talking about cloth simulation. Specifically, how to make objects that you model simulate like cloth, and how to add collision objects to your scenes. We'll be talking about how to improve your cloth simulation, how to store the, the cloth simulation as a part of your Blender file, or as a part of a separate cache. And I'll be talking about how to give your cloth thickness and make it look nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and start off by clicking on the splash screen to get rid of it. And I don't need my default cube right now, so I'll press X on my keyboard with it selected and delete. I'm gonna make a piece of cloth, it'll just be a square. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. And when you're making cloth, you're just modeling like you normally would model an object. It's just gonna be a mesh. In this case, I'll add a mesh plane. I'm gonna make it larger though. So I'll press S on my keyboard and then eight and then enter. So it's eight times larger than it was before and I'll move it straight up. I also want a collision object for this square piece of cloth to interact with, so I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and I'll add a default UV sphere just to the middle of my scene. Now my piece of cloth is just a square polygon. If I press Tab to go into edit mode, it only has four edges and four vertices and it's just one face. I need to have lots of edges, I need to cut it up in other words, uh, because we need edges and vertices and faces, um, a lot of them to make the cloth bend. You can't bend a uh, really one polygon except maybe diagonally once. Let's go ahead with the entire thing selected in edit mode and I'll press W on my keyboard to bring up the specials menu. I'll select subdivide and that will cut it up into uh, four pieces but down here on my tool shelf if you don't have that you can press T on your keyboard. I'll change the number of cuts right away up to 10. In fact that's not even enough cuts so I'll press W again and click on subdivide and I'll change that to five. So now we have, um, I believe, 50 edges uh, all the way across in both directions. So we have a lot of edges and faces and vertices to work with. Uh, let's go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode. And I'm gonna make these objects now have physics simulations on them. And what that means is I need to go over to my properties window. I'll make it a little bit wider so you can see it. And the physics tab is right here. It's a bouncing ball. And once I select that with a mesh selected, you can see the options that I have. I'm gonna make the plane a cloth object, so I'll click on cloth, and I'll make the UV sphere a collision object. That's the kind of object that you need to have. You actually need to tell Blender to make each object interact with the cloth by adding collision to it. When I add options in the physics tab to each mesh, they get options. We'll be working most, mostly with the cloth options on the cloth object, so I'll select the cloth. We're not gonna change anything yet though. What I'll do is I'll press play on my timeline. If you don't have a timeline, I'll go ahead and get rid of mine. You can grab this little cross hatched area and drag it straight down and then change this bottom window type from my 3D viewport to a uh, timeline window right there. We can press play or Alt A on your keyboard. Alt A is the keyboard shortcut to play and it will simulate assuming that you start at frame zero. That's very important. All right, so it's simulated. I actually sped that part of the video up. It actually takes a long time to simulate cloth depending on the speed of your computer. When it's actually simulating and running through your cloth simulation the first time, it'll show a red um, FPS. That means frames per second counter at the top left of your screen. Uh, don't be surprised if it goes very, very slow depending on the quality and the resolution of your simulation and of the mesh that you're working with as your cloth object. It's looking pretty good though. I've got a simulation the cloth drapes. If you've never seen that before or you've never done that for yourself on Blender before, um, it looks pretty darn good. I have some problems though. If I look closely, the cloth is poking through or the uh, uh, collision object is poking through the cloth and it's jittering a little bit. The other problem I have is that the cloth is colliding with the collision object, but it's not colliding with itself. At the bottom here, you can see the cloth is just going through itself, going through other pieces of fabric in the same piece, um, like it wasn't even there. We also have another problem that I'll address first, and if I zoom in, you'll see it a bit better. If I pause my simulation, you can see that from certain angles, the cloth bends in a very funny way. Because these are all square polygons on the cloth, um, it kind of might not bend in the right way because there aren't any edges from this vertice to this vertice or even down in that direction. So it doesn't bend very well, it's quite jaggy. I'm gonna solve that by adding what's called a triangulate modifier. And I can do that, I'll actually go back to frame zero. I can do that under the uh, wrench tab in the properties window with my cloth selected. 
I'll go there. And you'll actually see a cloth modifier here. That's because when you add a cloth physics simulation, it's actually adding a modifier. I'm going to add, with this cloth object selected, a triangulate modifier under the generate heading. And what that will do is it'll turn, if I go into wireframe uh, shading, it'll turn all of my square polygons into triangles by cutting each one in half from corner to corner. It's actually making some of them go in the opposite direction. Um, what I can do is I can play around with these triangulate settings. I can change um, them all to fixed quad methods that are all going the same way. I don't really care. I guess I'll leave it at fixed since I've already changed it. What you do need to do though is you need to change the order of these modifiers. Right now the cloth simulation is happening first and then it's turning all the faces into triangles which will not really do anything because it's already simulated the bending of the cloth. So what I'll do is I'll click this little up arrow to move the, the triangulate modifier first or up on the modifier stack so it'll make them triangles and then the cloth simulation will make the cloth bend, which means that I need to re-simulate. So let's go ahead and I'll zoom out and I'll go back to frame zero and I'll press Alt A to re-simulate and I'll speed this up again for you. All right, so as you can probably notice, the cloth looks quite a bit smoother than it did before. There are no kind of in and out jaggies because of the lack of edges. Those triangles really do help. And the cloth seems to be doing a bit better. If I go back into uh, material view, you can see that there's no, actually there is. The, uh, what I'll do actually is with the sphere selected, I'll give it a material. Under the material tab, I'll just change it to a bright color. Uh, there we go. I have viewport shading set to material so you can actually see that. It's poking through. So what I want to do now is to adjust the quality of my cloth simulation and the collisions. I'll press escape on my keyboard and with the cloth selected I'll go to my physics tab. That's where most of the options are. There are a lot of options here. The ones I'll talk about are all under the cloth heading and the cloth collision heading. There's two important values here. There's steps under quality under the cloth heading and quality under the cloth collision heading. So steps and quality. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I'll put my mouse over steps and it describes it as quality of the simulation in steps per frame. Higher is better quality but slower. And cloth collision quality is how many collision iterations should be done. Higher quality or higher is better quality but slower. What I understand this to mean is that it's actually simulating cloth simulation not only once per frame, but in this case, the cloth simulation five times per frame, and it's checking for cloth collision twice per frame. That's how I understand it. I could be wrong about the cloth collision value. I'm going to turn cloth quality up to six instead of five. That'll make it simulate more accurately, but also slower. And I'll turn the quality of the collision from two up to three, just one more up on each value so that it should be more accurate. What I also could change to stop the cloth from breaking through or the um, sphere to stop it from um, poking through the cloth is the distance that it keeps the cloth away from its collision objects. Right now, if I go to some point in my simulation, actually my cache has disappeared. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, it'll actually show you that once we simulate it, the cloth is not directly touching the collision object. It's actually staying a little bit away from that sphere. What I'll do though is I'll turn that number up to, it's at 0 0.015 right now. I'll change it to 0 0.03, so that's twice the distance away that it originally was. Let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and re-simulate, and again I'll speed this up for you. Okay, so I actually had a, quite a good simulation there. Uh, if I zoom in, the cloth is no longer going through the UV sphere at all. Um, and it's all looking pretty darn good. I still, though, have the cloth going through itself. Cloth collision is not enabled then, in other words. To fix that, what I'll do is I'll press escape on my keyboard to exit the simulation. And uh, over here under the cloth collision section with my cloth selected, I'll enable self collision. And again, it has quality. I'll turn that up to uh, two. Of course, the higher you turn it, the longer it'll take to simulate your cloth simulation. And let's go ahead and see how that looks. I'll press Alt A and I'll speed this up for you. Okay, so it looks a whole lot better now that the cloth is actually colliding with itself. 
it stops when it hits the opposing uh, piece of cloth that's following in the other direction. It looks pretty darn good. I think I've settled on my final simulation. This is where I need to talk about cloth cache because that's what this purple or dark blue uh, bar represents. It's the memory that's been taken up on your computer to store the information of where all of the vertices should be at each frame. Let's go ahead and press escape to exit the uh, simulation. If you try to scrub around in your simulation, especially if you have not uh, simulated all the way to the end of your timeline, you might notice that your simulation starts to error or might try to re-simulate. So scrubbing through your timeline, if you haven't gotten to the end of the, the timeline uh, with your simulation, is not recommended. To stop any changes from happening to the simulation or to stop it from trying to re-simulate, what you'll need to do is bake your simulation. That means to make your simulation permanent. Under the cloth cache section is where I can change all the options for how it stores the information. What I can do under that section is click on bake and what that would do is it would simulate again and it would make the simulation permanent. Of course you can always undo a simulation uh, but what I actually want to do is I want to take the current cache, my current simulation, and bake it, make it permanent. So if I click that button it'll gray out a lot of my options because they're not available. The cache, the simulation has been made permanent and I can now freely scrub around my timeline without any worry that anything's going to get changed. It's sort of permanent. I would do this before I rendered. What I also could do, if I wanted to undo it, is click on free bake. Okay, so you can always bake your current cache and free the bake. That's all great. What you also might want to do is change the way that Blender actually stores your simulation information. Right now, if I save this file, in fact, I'm going to bake my current cache. If I save my current file, I'll go to File, Save, and I'll change this to, um, to Cloth Simulation. And I'm saving it onto my desktop, and I click on Save Blender File. And I minimize this, and I look at the actual file right there. If I go to uh, its properties, it's a large file. It's 39.4 megabytes, which is very large for a Blender file. If I don't want the cache, the simulation, to be stored directly in this file, I could, let's go ahead and close this and go back into Blender, I could check this disk cache button before I baked it, and what that would do is it actually put a folder in the same location as the Blender file, and it would store a bunch of, I think it's called B physics uh, files that you really can't edit, but that's okay. It would store a bunch of files that would store each frame's information of simulation separately, so your Blender file would be smaller in case that's what you'd prefer. Let's go ahead now and play with how the cloth looks because right now I can still see all of the faces and I want the cloth to have thickness as well. Of course I could with the cloth selected click on smooth but what I'd actually prefer first is to make the cloth have thickness. To do that with the cloth selected I'm going to add what's called a solidify modifier. So under the wrench tab with the cloth selected I'm going to go to add modifier and I'm going to add solidify. What that will do and you might have seen a little bit of a change there is it'll add it to the end of the modifier stack after your simulation, which means that it's not going to affect your simulation. If I go back to the first frame where we can actually see the cloth, um, the cloth's profile, the cloth is actually now basically a cube, and so it has depth now. If I hide the solidify modifier, you can see that before it was just a paper thin, actually it had no depth. Uh, piece of cloth, but now it has thickness. You can change all of the options here. You can make the thickness go in reverse. So if you want the cloth to stick out more, which could actually help when you have um, cloth poking through uh, its collision objects, you can make the thickness in reverse to make the cloth quite a bit larger. Um, but what you also might do, let's go ahead and make this just a little bit uh, deeper so it has some thickness in the right direction, is change the offset value and that's this value right here. Um, if I slide that around you can see that I can make the cloth actually kind of change where it is relative to every vertex um, in itself. So if I press uh, Z to go into wireframe mode and then go into my front view and select the collision object, you can see that the cloth is now quite a bit away from the collision object. If I uh, change the offset, you can see that it changes how far away it is uh, from where it would normally be, and of course you can change the thickness as well. So you can play around with a lot of those values. Uh, the last thing I'll do is I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to make it look all smooth. Um, so with it selected, in fact I'll go back into, actually no I won't go back into material view. Um, I'm going to add a last modifier. We have three now. We have triangulate, cloth, 
and solidify. I'll add subdivision surface as well. That will make it all nice and smooth. And because it added this modifier uh, last, it is messing up the creases of the edges of my cloth. In other words, the creases are now being smoothed out as well. I don't want that, so I'm going to move this subdivision surface modifier up one so it smooths out the mesh before it adds its thickness. So I'll click this button here. There, it's now third in the stack, and solidify happens last. I could now um, add smooth shading on my tool shelf, and now I have what looks like quite um, nice smooth cloth. Let's go ahead and watch that in its final simulation. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.